If you just purchased a 3D printer or looking to buy one and want to create your own 3D prints customized, well today I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a program called Tinkercad.com, absolutely free website. All you need to do is go over here to the far right, click on join now to create an account. It'll ask for some information like your birthday. If you're going to pick one random, just make sure it's far away or uh, very old, else you uh, it asks for a parent's email. Come up with an email, a password, click agree, click on create account. After this page, it'll just ask you what 3D printer you actually have so it knows what size to make the bed inside the program so all your pieces fit properly. I actually have an account. I'll click on sign in. And once that does, it'll ask for my email. I'll click next. And you can click uh, stay signed in. Click on sign in here. And this is the page you always come to whenever you sign in, and this is showing your past projects. So these are all the ones that I've been working on here the last couple of weeks to make some really cool things and uh, some mods. Uh, if you want to create one for the very first time, you would just go over here and click on Create New Design. If I wanted to go back and work on this one again, I just go over here and click on Tinker This, and it'll take you back into it. But today we're going to be creating a new design so I can show you how it works and kind of what it looks like. I'll show you some quick navigational things here and show you what all these buttons mean. If we go over here and left click on box and then left click again on the work plane, you'll now have a box. If you take your far right mouse button, you can kind of spin it around and see all angles. You can also do the same thing over here. There's a uh, option for top and if you click to the right, it'll show you the right of the box and the back of the box. If you kind of drag it back over, you can uh, also click on this home button, it's home view, left click, and it'll straighten it up for you. This option is fit all in view. It just zooms it in really close. If I roll the mouse back, I can click on zoom in or zoom out. Or this one's called orthographic view. It's just an aerial view, which I don't really prefer. So I'll go ahead and click it again, put it back. Um, if we click on this, we have a few options here. If I wish to delete it, I can go up here and click on the delete trash can. And if I say, well, you know what, I wish to have that back, then you have an undo. Also, Control Z and the delete key on those both work on your keyboard just fine. Uh, let's say I wanted to copy this, you could Control C, or you can use this option here to copy it and then paste it. And now we have two of them. So that, that option works as well. Once it's highlighted, I'm just going to delete that one. And now it's gone. If we click on this box, we've got some options here. You'll notice that it's red, and if you click on it, you can change the color. It's very nice whenever we're working with more than one item that's very similar in size or shape, and they're really close together. You know where one starts and where one ends, and uh, that's pretty nice. So it's really easy to see. Um, you can uh, go ahead and we'll delete this. You can change the radius of this by moving the slider back and forth, take it all the way down to a ball or just around those edges. You can also leave that all the way full on radius. You can slide these uh, steps back and forth. You can actually change it into different dimensions. So it's another possibility. You can also control the length, width, and height of that box right here. If I wish for it to be 30, and this one 30, can change those right there. Now, I don't typically do that. I will uh, I'll show you a quicker way in just a second. But being that that's 30, that means it's probably in millimeters. So if you want to change that to inches, you come down here to Edit Crid. Down here, you have the option of selecting uh, inches, and just left click on that. And then the heights here are the work plane, so that's the bed of your 3D printer. Click Update Grid once you've got inches, and now we're in inches. Still doesn't show the dimensions of that box, and the way you do that is go over here and left-click on Ruler and select your item. Now we can actually see the dimensions. So say we want that box to be 2 inches tall. Select it, type in 2 and hit Enter. Uh, same with this. You'll see that the blue line will put 2, Enter. Now, then you're going to see that there's a green line here and a green line here. This is moving the box. So if we just want to move it over here, you can do so. We'll put it at 7. Enter. And it's just moving it just a hair. Sometimes when you get these boxes in here, they don't always just click together. Uh, there's like a little gap right here. You can see it right there. Um, sometimes you just need to move it over using that green. So that works really well. Um, also, some more options here. Uh, if we want to, you've got uh, flip. You can flip the object. Um, if we've put these two objects together, we 
hold down shift and click both of them. We can align those using this option here. And that'll give us a bunch of dots. If I click this, this is the center one. And click this, this is the center one. It should be dead center on the inside. We'll, uh, we'll lower this green down and should be centered right there in the center. So that's the align and how to use it. We can also hide objects. Say uh, we've got this red box here, but right now we're working on the green box and so we don't want to see it. You can come over here and you can click on the light bulb and you left click and it'll disappear. It's still there, but uh, when you're ready for it to come back, you can come up here and hit the light bulb and it'll return. Say this box is perfect. I've been working on it all day, but I don't want it to get screwed up or the dimensions messed up. You can go over here and you can click the lock. Locking this box, now I can't edit it, I can't cut it, I can't do anything to it. This uh, box here, the stripes, these are actually holes. They'll cut into whatever object. So if I put that over top of this object, highlight both of them, and then I go to group, I can't because that object is locked and it won't let me do that. If I move this box over to here and highlight these, I could then go ahead and group and it'll then cut into that. So locking an object, if you want to unlock, you just go ahead and click the lock again and it puts it back. Say I wanted this solid box to turn into a hole. Um, I can go over here and click on hole and now it's that object. And I realize that it's over here as well, so let's just go ahead and I'll delete this box and we'll bring in a cone. You could have a cone that's either a solid or you can make it a hole and you can then move that over here and if you group these it would then co cut out a cone shape out of that. So that is how you use that. And If you go back you can do the undo. So that really quickly is basically how to use Tinkercad with all the little options around it. Uh, if we look up here on the right, you've got some basic shapes. Uh, these are the ones that you'll most typically use just about every day. You'll find yourself using the boxes and the cylinders the most. It's at least what I use. You can choose an option like text. You can use some letters. You've got some characters here. I haven't really used those much. Uh, connectors, if you wish to create something where you could snap it together. You've got some options there. Uh, I've got some other things here. Shape generator. I've actually found some gears and stuff in the past that seem to work really well. Looks like some states and some stairs and all kinds of other things. Um, a few other things here. For the most part though, you're going to stay with basic shapes. And today I'm going to show you this very simple one. It's just a box. I'm going to left click with the mouse. I'm on a Windows computer. Left click and then I'm going to left click again and then I'll actually drop it onto our work surface. I just roll the mouse forward with the mouse wheel. And I've got a couple options here in regards to resizing. Now you've got uh, little white dots here in all four corners. If I left click and drag, I can make it larger, I can make it smaller. Same goes with this little white dot here. If I click on it, I can make it larger, or I can make it smaller. You've got another little tiny arrow here. If I click on that, it raises the piece up and it also lowers it. You can actually lower it through your work plane. I don't know why you do that, but you could. But uh, if you look to the far right here, You'll see that it's back at zero. That means that you're flat on the work plane, so it'll, it'll put it flat. Now let's say uh, I wanted to turn this. We can actually move it away so it's a little easier to see. We've got some options here. If you wanted to rotate it, I'll just hold down the far left mouse button. And it'll tell you the degrees you're at, so you'll know that it's perfectly back flat at 180 degrees. Right there. Okay. You can also do the same thing here. You'll see the little... Uh, arrows you can spin it so you can see it at a different angle or maybe you design something you want to do it that way. Back over here to this box now that we've got this red one this box is actually a hole so when I line it up here I'll put it into our box we'll do it a little off kilter I like it perfectly center and I don't know if that's perfectly center or that's perfectly center but we'll do it off kilter so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this will actually make a hole. Now I can change the size like you saw to whatever size I wish. Uh, we'll say I want it right there, but I want it dead center in this red box. The way you do that is, is you will hold down your, I hold down the left shift key. On the red box, I'll click it one time, and then I'll click this hole or this other box. And I'll go up here and I'll click on this align option. Left click. Now it gives me some tabs to allow me to center this. If I go over here and click this one right here, it should center it right in the center. And I click this one right here, and now centers it dead even. 
All right, now that I've got it perfectly aligned, I want to cut a hole. But first, I don't know if it goes all the way through. It looks like it does because it's flat with the surface. If you wanted to go crazy, you could grab this arrow. You could push it all the way down. It'll actually pop out the bottom. And then I could either highlight the whole thing just by clicking and dragging, selecting it all, or I can hit Control A. It selects it all as well. Go up here and we want to group this when we left click and group. It and now will cut out that hole in the shape of a square. So in it, let's say you, you wanted to do that again. Um, we could do it again with a box, or maybe you want to do it with a cylinder. Say I need a hole in that, uh, a round hole. I could make a cylinder, click this, I could rotate that 90 degrees, and say I want to spin it, so we're looking at it correctly, 90 degrees again, right there. All right, I want to click the uh, our little hole here. I'm going to grab this air, I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to move it over here to the side. I'm going to push it on in here. But it doesn't quite go through, so I'm going to just go ahead and extend it. Grab that little tab, extend it. Now, and I want it to be perfect though. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down Shift, click the red box. Actually, I'm just gonna hit Control A. It'll select them all, and I'll click on that align. It'll give me the options again here. I'll click on this one, center it, and boom. Now then, I'll go ahead and highlight them all. We'll watch it happen in real time. Click on Group, and bam we have got a perfect hole. All right, now let's say this was really good here, but I, I changed my mind, I don't want the hole. Go up here and hit ungroup. And when you do that, it pulls that object you stuck out, or you stuck in there, out of it. So I could actually hit delete while it's highlighted, and it removes it. Now we're back to where we started. You can do the same thing with all these other objects. Let's say I want a ball. This ball's really large, so let's try to shrink it down so it's not so crazy large. We'll get it about there. You could obviously use the dimensions and make it all perfect. I think actually we are seven by seven by seven. Uh, let's say we want it right here, but let's make it go a little higher. But if I go ahead and group this, watch what happens. This ball now turns into the object. So when I print this, this will be a little stick out, right? Let's say I'm going to hit Control Z because I don't want it to stick out. I want a hole with it. So you would then hit Control A, select them all. And I'd, uh, before I do that, actually, I apologize, click the ball and click this hole. When I do that, it turns it in just like these boxes and cylinders. It now turns it into a hole. I'll hit Control A to select it all. I'll group it. And now we've got a concave hole. If I would have made that ball a little bigger, go all the way through, I'll hit Control C. I'll show you that. So you see what I mean? Push it in a little farther. There, it's popping through. Control A, group, and boom. We've now got a hole. So you can turn any of these shapes into a hole as well. So that's pretty nice as well. Now then, so like you saw a second ago connecting that ball, we can control, can connect other objects as well. And I'll show you how to do that now. So we've got this cylinder, say there, and I want it to come out of here. But I want it to be flat right there, so wiggle it in. Again, if I was uh, using the numbers, I could make this look a little nicer, but... To just say we wanted that, just highlight it all, hit group, and now it's one object. Go ahead and let's show you how to export that as well as doing some importing. Um, if we just wanted to export that to your printer, we'd go up here and hit export. You can choose between object and STL and SVG, and I usually use STL for my 3D printer. I click that. It creates down here. And you'll want to install the program Cura, C-U-R-A. You just do a Google for it and download that. Just by double-clicking that file, it'll now open up Cura, and it'll show us this piece on, on our bed here of what it's going to look like. Now, I have a, a little SD card. I take that out of my 3D printer, plug that into the computer. It's got a little USB port there. I, then we'll 
uh, save this file onto with Cura. So there it is. Uh, I'm going to close out these. And we can zoom in the same way by just rolling the mouse forward. Cura works very much similar to Tinkercad. I can left click and move it over here. We can zoom in. Now let's say you, uh, sometimes someone will you'll print something in Thingiverse and it'll be at a weird angle or st standing straight up. You can get faster print times by printing it in different ways. Um, and you can change the way that it prints by rotating it with that rotate tool. I just click there. So it shows 90 degrees. That rotate tool is right here. There's another one here for scale. If you ever wanted to make it smaller, this is a quick way. You just type in 50% in one and it 50% does it in all the others. Um, so let's say I was going to print this. We'll take it back to 100 so you get an idea of what it looked like. I will uh, we'll rotate it back. Just watch for it to go back to 90 degrees. I'll move this back to the center. It doesn't matter. You could print it anywhere you wish on your bed. Go back to the move option to move it. We'll come over here and you can select your quality. Infill. Infill is going to be the one that you'll probably change the most. If you want it to be a really solid piece, you could take it all the way up to 100%. Most of the time you won't. 50% usually is pretty good. If it's a, if an object that you just kind of look at that you don't ever touch, sure, it could be 15 to 20%, and that's usually pretty good. Those are fairly strong. Uh, infill pattern, I usually use cubic. Uh, you can use any of these, but cubic. Um, the honeycomb, like a, a beehive, that's about the strongest, but Cura doesn't offer that, so Cubic's about the one I use the most. When it comes to 3D printers, different filaments like different settings. Check your spool for the manufacturer's recommendation. That's the best way to know. But today I'm printing with PETG, so I found 250 Celsius out the nozzle and 80 Celsius on my bed plate really seem to be the magic numbers for my 3D printer. When it comes to speed, 50 to uh, 65, 70, that's about as fast as you want to go. If it goes too fast, it doesn't seem to want to stick. Um, once you get all those set, that's pretty much all I ever uh, mess with. You can use support. Um, you can. This one wouldn't need support. If there was something overhanging, you would need the support. But I usually leave it checked. It won't create it if it doesn't need it. Go ahead and click on prepare. If you watch down here, it'll tell you the time it'll take. 19 minutes to print this piece. And honestly, it's very accurate. It will take a few minutes for your bed and the heating nozzle to warm up the, the filament. But other than that, once it hits that temperature, that number is just dead on. At that point, you go ahead and click on Save to File. If you've got your little SD card in, it'll save that to your SD card. Or you can just go ahead and select some place on the desktop or wherever you wish to save it. And then just move it over to however you get it to your 3D printer. And then just go ahead and hit Print on your 3D printer and you'll have the piece. So... Basically, guys, that is a very quick tutorial on how to use Tinkercad and export it over to Cura. One last thing I'll show you really quick. If you wanted to import something, it works the very same. You just go ahead and click on Import, choose a file, and you can just download those files off of Thingiverse, or if you've made something in the past, you can then select it here, and it'll just go ahead and import it. So. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll show you another video very soon in regards to how to make stuff in Tinkercad. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense.